I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm going to the dark side. This is the deck I hate the most. But I'm doing it for science. I'm doing it for you. On stream, I played the popular 2.9 Expo deck to get a better understanding of how to use it and most importantly, how to win with this deck. In this video, I'll be going over the deck, some basic strategy of the deck, what to do in your opening hand, and at the end, I got some tips and tricks that you can use to hopefully win a couple of your first games. So let's just, just hop right into it. Just swipe me in. It was, swipe left on me. This deck is 2.9 elixir cost, so it's got a very, very quick cycle. Okay, let's be honest. This deck, it's literally half a game. This deck, do you know what this deck is? This deck is the equivalent of if you were playing soccer and you said, hey, I want to play soccer, but I never want to cross half. I never want to cross half line, the half court line. No, that's half field line. I don't want to pass that line that's in the middle of the field, but I'm going to shoot the ball from that middle line and I'm going to score. I'm going to score. Not all the time, but I will score. I hope that analogy made sense. Basically, you're playing half a game with this deck, and that's because it's so dang good on defense, and you never really have to use any offensive cards. You just play defensive cards and defend your offensive card, but it's on your side, so you're still playing defense. Oh, I'm getting angry just talking about this deck. This deck is very, very, very powerful. It's a very, very powerful deck. The primary win condition is the Expo, and this deck excels on defense. Every single card in this deck, including the win condition, the Expo, can be used on defense, and it's very, very annoying for your opponent. They have to play your style of game. Not only that, but they have to push onto your side to deal with your win condition. I know it's crazy that that's just, that's that's Expo. That's how Mafia works. Yeah. This deck is very, very matchup dependent. So that means every matchup, you're gonna be playing this deck a little different. I can't go over all the matchups. I cannot, but I'll go over some general tips that you can use to hopefully in all the matchups and win some games. That's, that's, this is what it's about. You want to win. You don't want to be a loser. You want to be a winner. You want to be a winner. So now it's time for the changes. What changes can you make to this deck? And should you make any changes to this deck? You can. It's fine. It will not be a 2.9 Expo deck if you make changes, but that's fine. It doesn't have to be a 2.9 Expo deck. Every Expo deck is very, very powerful. Starting off the changes, you can't change Expo. I'm sorry, it's an Expo deck. You can't change Expo. That's the one card in this deck you cannot change. The next card that you can potentially change is the Tesla. You can change the Tesla for maybe the Bomb Tower. I'm saying maybe. I thought about it when I was making this video. I think it might be able to work. The Bomb Death Damage could help the Expo. I don't know. Maybe this might be a new deck. Maybe someone watches this and it's going to be number one in Ladder. So I said it first here. But another thing you can use is Inferno Tower. Inferno Tower is very, very powerful as well in a lot of matchups. And the last card that I've seen people use is the Mini Pack instead of the Tesla. All very, very powerful cards. Uh, give them a try. The next card that you can potentially change is the archers. What can you change the archers for? Well, you can change the archers for maybe the ice wizard. You can maybe change the archers for the musketeer. You can basically change the I you can change it for any ranged unit that is doesn't just die to like that doesn't die to zap like spear goblin. So changing it for the e-wiz, maybe changing it for the dark goblin. All work. Uh, it really changes up how you play the deck, but they all work in the deck. So, yo, give them a try. Have See which one you like the best. Also, whatever one the highest levels. Use that. Next card you could change potentially is the Ice Golem. What can you change the Ice Golem to? You can change it maybe with the Knight. You can change it with the Valkyrie. Or you can change it for the Mini P.E.K.K.A. again. Yes, the Mini P.E.K.K.A. could also make a spot in the Ice Golem. You can't use it for both the Tesla and the Ice Golem, but if you want to pick one, you can easily. Mini P.E.K.K.A., it's a good card. Low key. Very, very good card. You heard it here first. And the next two cards that you could potentially change in this deck are the spells. You can change the log. And the fireball for maybe the rocket and the bar barrel is it good it's different it's very very different they work i prefer the log a little over the bar barrel personally just because you can get that constant chip on your opponent's tower also the fireball is a little more versatile than the rocket and the rocket if you ever miss it it's not going to be good so but you can try it out 100 percent. they do work they do and the last cards that you can change in this deck are those little cycle cards. Those are the skellies and the ice spirit. The skeletons and the ice spirit. You can potentially change these for any other cycle card. These cycle cards can include the fire spirits, the bats, the goblins. Um, it definitely makes your elixir cost are a little higher. I know it doesn't sound like a lot. Hey, cash, it's only one elixir compared to two. But it does make a very, very big difference. So I wouldn't change these, but if you want to, if they're under level and you have other cards that are higher level, like the bats or the goblins, throw them in, see how they work. And if they don't work, go back to the skellies. No harm, no foul. So what is the strategy for this deck? How do you play this deck? And what is the end goal for this deck? Well, in the early game, what you're gonna wanna do is be very patient. You wanna play some defense. You wanna get some very, very good elixir trades. And hopefully you can build an elixir lead. Once you have this elixir lead, you drop that expo, you drop it at the bridge, drop it like it's hot, like a hot potato. 
and if you're lucky you'll get a lock and you'll get a lot of damage and rinse repeat but if let's say example he has a card that counters the expo it could be the royal giant or maybe even the pekka and you think hey i can't defend this right now with the elixir lead well you can play some defense out cycle that card that counters the expo and then basically just drop another one and rinse repeat very very good it gets a lot of locks and eventually hopefully you win that way just rinse repeat it's like the whole like recycling pyramid all you have to do is you 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 defend get elixir lead play expo and then rinse repeat that's it that's it i can do like a little triangle here boom 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 hopefully they i don't know i don't even know if i can edit that so it is time it is time for cash's tip time i'm gonna grab it from low uh, uh, tip time the first cash tip i have for you guys today is to use your ice golem to use your ice golem no but to use your ice golem to kite your opponent's units it's very very powerful you can get very very good trades with it and if you're like hey cash what does kiting even mean well this is when your opponent plays a unit on going down let's say it's going down the right side of your lane and you play the ice golem you play it on the left side but the closest to the middle on the left side of the arena the pekka sees this ice golem says hey that i want to kill that follows the ice golem and the, the ice golem says hey i want to run away from the pekka so it runs away they're the same speed cat and dog cat and mouse whatever the the, the folk tales talk about these days well they're going to follow each other and while the pekka is following this ice golem it's going to get hit by the right tower it's going to get hit by the left tower and you're not going to have to worry about it do you know what that is that is an elixir trade of positivity shout out to lemon juice because that is good clash royale that's 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 good stuff that's that freshly squeezed what is this is 1.1.5 how is that possible how can you have a 1.5 of a tip well i make the rules around here i can do whatever i want i can make a sheep appear in midair that's a sheep and this is a chihuahua so this tip goes hand in hand to and fro with the ice golem kiting. So example, if you're kiting an opponent's unit with the ice golem, make sure you don't play another, another unit too close to the unit that's being kited. Just because it can easily retarget that unit you just played. And the whole kiting that you just did, that you worked so hard on, is a failure. And you don't want to fail. You don't want to fail. So just make sure if you play a unit, that you play it out of range of the opponent's unit. So it doesn't retarget that unit. And so you don't cry. The second cash tip I have for you guys today is you can use your log to retarget your opponent's unit that locks onto your expo. So let's say your opponent plays a range unit and it locks onto your expo right away and it's hitting it and you're like, hey, this expo, I wanna keep it alive. Well, you can use the log to push that unit back, play another unit in front, for example, the ice spear or the uh, ice golem, and it will retarget onto that new unit you just played. Very, very good way to keep your expo alive and you should do it. It's very, very powerful tip. The next cash tip I have for you guys is to play defensive expos. Defensive expos are very, very powerful, but they're used very differently depending on if it's single or double elixir. If it's single elixir, usually it will just be for defensive purposes, where in double elixir, you can use that defensive expo, get to another expo, and you can use that defensive expo to support your new offensive expo. It's a very, very powerful combination. It's very, very crucial. One thing I wanna add though is make sure you play the expo, the defensive expo, on whatever tower has more health of yours because easily most people will spell that tower and you don't want it to be the one that the opponent's already going for the next tip i have for you guys today it's usually i use this at the beginning of games and that is if your opponent plays a unit let's say it's between four and eight elixir behind their king tower to start off a game well use your expo in the opposite lane if you have it in your hand it's very very powerful they'll have less elixir to defend that expo if you get that lock to start off a game it's a great way to start a game so do it just what are you waiting for just do it do it, do it, do it. The tip I have for you guys today, the tip is just to let your expo die sometimes. It's it's okay to let your expo die. If you play an expo at the bridge and let's say your opponent plays, drops that Pekka, drops that baby dragon, just drops too many units and you're like, hey, I'm not gonna be able to defend it. Well, don't just just let it die and just work on work on a defense. Work on play that Tesla a little further back. Use it to chip away to your opponent's units and then rinse repeat. Yo, I gotta get this triangle back out. I'll do it. The next tip I have for the people of the world is to don't over defend. Over defending is probably just as bad as over 
aggressive, o- over offensively, over defending, over offending, offending, offending. Is that right? Is that wrong? I don't know. Let me know in the comment. No, make sure you don't over defend. If you over defend, it is going to penalize getting that elixir league. So let's say if your opponent plays a unit at the bridge and you get scared and you maybe play too many units where you could have maybe defended it with half of those units or just one of the two units that you played. Don't just try not to really try not to try to be as efficient as possible You have a lot of units like the skeletons like the ice skull and like the the ice spirit And if you can stop an opponent's card with just one of them make sure you do this next tip I have I just added in just because it's a very simple tip But it's something I want to make sure everybody knows and it's the combo of the Tesla and the expo A lot of people joke about this combo and how powerful it is, but it truly is powerful So make sure you use it, but don't over utilize it. It's a very expensive. It's a 10 elixir push and you could get penalized for it but don't be scared to use it that's very contradictive cash you said to use it but also don't use it what do i do i would say use it boys <laughs> time for youtuber voice hey guys it's me with the next tip i have for you guys i'm a youtuber that's some meta stuff going on right now next tip i have for you guys is to spell cycle spell cycle is a great way to end a game for example if your opponent has let's say less than less than 700 hp on their tower uh, and if you can't get a lock with your expo or you don't think you could get another lock, uh, you can always spell cycle, making sure you spell cycle with the log whenever you can get a unit and the tower or the fireball and hit the tower. Whenever you get any value whatsoever with your spells, make sure you can hit the tower. And if you're in a situation they're not giving you value, you have so many defensive cards that you can easy, easily pull. You can put an expo down. You can put your archers down. When you get back to your elixir, boom, you already have so much invested on defense. You can throw a fireball and rinse, repeat, defend, get that elixir lead, put some units down and then throw another fireball. Rinse, repeat. You can win games like this. You don't only have to win by locking on with the expo. Another win condition in this deck? What? Poof. Cash didn't say that before. I'm saying it now. Boom. Why am I still holding this pen? I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I went to the dark side and learned 2.9 for science, may I add. I can't believe I, I did it. I did it. I am done. I am done with this deck. I am never going to touch this deck again. No, I will. It's actually a very, very powerful deck. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something. Hopefully, you guys can use some of these tips to win a couple of your first matches. Hopefully, you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. And let me know in the comment section below which deck you want me to do the starter guide on for next. Do you want it to be 2.6 Hog? Do you want it to be Mortar Bait? Do you want it to be Pekka Bridge? spam or any other any other decks that you want let me know in the comments below and yeah i hope you guys have a great rest of your day peace out enjoy deuces